ride, a fantastic ride. And there's a saying in life, if you had to choose your life over, what would you do? Well, I would do it exactly the same as I've done it since I was born. Uh, those were the almost prophetic words of boxing trainer Nick Durant in May last year when he announced his retirement. Uh, on Friday, the boxing community were left shocked and saddened to hear of his passing after a motorbike accident in the Free State. Durant, who was awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award at the South African Boxing Awards, only in January trained 27 international champions, 97 South African champions and 38 world champions. Colin Nathan, he himself, a boxing trainer, joins us now to speak about the loss to the sport. A very good morning to you, Colin, and welcome to Morning Live. Morning, and it's rather sad that I'm here talking about an absolute icon and legend of South African boxing. I, um, when, I got, when I was told the news on Friday, I was in total, I still am sitting, I'm stunned. It's hard to imagine that a man who was larger than life, who, who really did change the face of South African boxing in the 90s, it's no longer, it's crazy. Where were you when you received the news? Actually, I was finishing uh, the TK show here at SABC when I got told the news, and uh, shocking. I mean, I, at first I didn't believe it. I thought it was just a nasty rumor or a bad joke. And then obviously my phone didn't stop ringing thereafter, and it was confirmed that he passed away in a bike accident. Uh, I know when Boxing South Africa released uh, their statement uh, to uh, let uh, the rest of South Africa know about uh, Nick Durant's passing, they actually said, you know, he, they had just received an application because he wanted, he had reapplied to be a trainer. So although he announced his retirement less than a year ago, he wanted to actually come back and train more world champions. Well, you know, when he retired, it left a bit of a hole, not a bit, a big hole in South African boxing. And, yeah, I'm not surprised that he was going to come back. Nick was a very, very good trainer, great manager. Um, like I'm saying, his record speaks for itself. But, you know, when he retired from boxing, there was a big hole that could have been replaced with him coming back. And now the fact that he's passed on, that hole will always be there mm. in the hearts of South African boxing. I mean, it is, it is such, a, such a massive loss. I mean, w what does it mean for the boxing, for boxing in South Africa? Well, a larger-than-life character's gone. And Nick Durant was his own man, and he did things his way. Um, very controversial, very outspoken, very flamboyant, and highly, highly charismatic. You went to a press conference with Nick Durant, you knew Nick Durant was there, and you knew his fighters were ready for war. Um, we will never see another fight, uh, trainer and manager like Nick Durant in this country. 95 or 97 world, uh, South African champions and 38 world champions. Um, his resume is just legendary. And, you know, I very rarely use the word legend, but Nick Durant is a legend of South African boxing. Uh, what would you say was his, his, his greatest asset yeah, as a trainer? He was a great motivator. He got his fighters in impeccable shape. And um, sometimes slapping his fighters in between the corner, between rounds in the corner, very controversial at times. But he got the job done. Often, particularly with Daniel Brewer, he would Daniel Brewer would be behind in a fight, and Nick would get into the corner and slap him. And the next thing, the next round, Daniel Brewer would knock the guy out. You know, so it worked. It worked for Nick Durant. And like I'm saying, um, there will never be a figure quite like Nick Durant again. He's had a hand in many people's careers. Um, one of those uh, fighters we actually saw in action over the weekend, Zelani Tete, who won the WBO Bantamweight World title. Yeah, I mean, you know, you look at the fighters Nick's trained. And what's ironic about Nick's passing, very similar on the day, 16 years ago, pretty much to the day, Hasim Rahman knocked out Lennox Lewis in South Africa. And that was a big upset globally. And what's ironic about that is that Nick was in Rahman's corner creating that upset. And my only comparison would be is that, you know, an upset happened and now a nation mourns and is upset on the passing of Nick Durant. Who, I mean, there, there's so many, obviously, I mean, amongst his 38 world champions. I mean, but who would you say were his greatest fighters? Like, who, who's, those fighters that, had it not been for Nick, they wouldn't have been the fighters that they are? Well, listen, you can't, you can't not mention Cassius Bolo and you can't sure. not mention Marutium Talani, who is still active as a flyweight champion, who's defending his championship on Friday. But, and also Philip the Time Bomondo. Um, 
Nick got him to a position where, and his promoter got him to a position where Philip actually fought the great May, Floyd Mayweather Jr. He ended up losing, obviously, because Floyd's unbeaten 49-0. But the point is, is that Nick got him to that position and put on a fight with, 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 with Mayweather Jr. So there are so many fighters that you can mention and so many fighters that you can allude to, but you, you have to mention those three. You, as a boxing trainer yourself, uh, what did you learn from Nick? You know, Nick always wanted the best deal for his fighter and he would not back down, come hell or high water. And I respected Nick so much for that. He fought every inch for his fighter. When it came to a fight contract at the best deal, Nick would not back down. And like I'm saying, he did things his way. Um, and highly respected. So if I could take one thing, he always fought for what he believed in, in his fight and what his fighter was worth. And that's a good lesson for me as a trainer coming through. Something else that uh, Nick did was greater than just what he did for his fighters in the ring. And that was actually to speak up on behalf of boxing in South Africa. Yeah, and he rubbed up people the wrong way, didn't he? But inevitably, he got the message through. And you got to respect the man for that. And like I'm saying, he never backed down. He would always fight for what he believed in. And, and that's a lesson to be learned. Uh, details of his funeral? I am not sure. Um, for, I mean, for, for those people that maybe, um, you know, like that it's, it's, such a, it's such a sad and shocking loss. But what's I suppose for the motorcycling community? Because people don't realize just how, how big he was into his, his motorbikes. Yeah, I think he was the president's, uh, president or chairperson of the yeah. Crusaders. And, and it's a horrible loss because he, he was a leader in that organization so it's, and also for his family and his kids Damien and Storm my heart goes out to them and my condolences to the Duran family um, you know I just you know I was at a boxing show yesterday and just speaking to people people can't get over the fact that the man's not here it's crazy it's oh. like a bad dream it's surreal you know uh, thank you very much. That's Colin Nathan, himself a boxing trainer, speaking to us about the uh, legendary Nick Durant, who passed away untimely uh, this uh, past uh, weekend. It's time now for Morning Life to take a break. We've got headline news after this.